My name is Dismas Nkunda. Uh, I am Ugandan and um, I chair almost about uh, six, six different outf outfits on the African continent, one of which is uh, International Refugee Rights Initiative, which I founded uh, in 2004. And then I chair also DAFU Consortium, which is a consortium of 50 international human rights organizations that is working on the problem of DAFU for the last seven years. Uh, I also chair what we call CRI, that is uh, Citizenship Rights in Africa. Um, and I serve on many boards of international human rights organizations. Um, formerly I was a journalist, uh, covered the 1994 Rwanda genocide, um, and you know the horrors of Rwanda, there are too many. Um, oh. Sometimes some of them, that's what I was speaking to my friends, and I told them that it's the inspiration that I got to get out of journalism after rising to the rank of an editor um, to decide and say, I can't keep on chronicling death um, when actually could be able to help in terms of ending the miseries that people go through when they are faced with uh, um, problems of genocide, war, famine, um, displacement. And um, yeah, so that's the inspiration that led me to leave journalism a good profession mm -hmm. after becoming Uganda's investigative journalist for 1982. Uh, so I joined the, the other world to be able to see whether I can add anything yeah. to humanity. So what we were talking today a lot about leadership in the context of uh, global citizenship. What does leadership mean to you? My first interaction with the leadership came when my father was killed. Uh, my father died when I was 12. and. Uh, the, I had to be able to bury my father at the age of 12. And uh, at the same time, so I had to, to uh, do that and look after my nine sisters. So at the time, at the age of 12, I was already uh, inculcated into the manner of how to look after your own family, family of my nine, six, nine sisters, so, and my mother. And uh, that's why I keep, I was telling my colleagues today that I sometimes say that uh, uh, my mother is my my mother my mother is my father, simply because we work together to be able to bring up this family. So and it is that trajectory that led me to go into the human rights work, and I've been given responsibilities by various individuals on the African continent who believe that I can help them in simple manners of um, taking forward what they think. And leadership to me is the capacity to be able to listen interpret what people think, have the uh, humility to be able to accept that certain things you, you think you know might be actually very, um, uh, only to you, but when other people, even those you think that you don't know, they actually have something to tell you that you can learn from even the person who, are, who for example, doesn't have the same qualification as you. What do you think could African leaders contribute to global citizenship? Um, well, the, the, the political analogy of Africa is that uh, Africa probably up to now, they, they are not fully integrated into the, into the, the global world uh, simply because of some of them, the problems they have in terms of their own governance problems, in terms of them not, uh, not being responsible to their own citizen. So I think there is a transformation that is required, and I think it's starting slowly with the Arab Spring, with the Tunisian Revolution, with the Egyptian <coughs> uprising, in which people are saying, you know, you're supposed to be our leaders, not necessarily, you're not supposed to be telling us what to do. So I think <coughs> the process is moving on, and we are happy that it's being done by the youth, and we do believe that uh, at some point, given the intercommunication that is happening worldwide, that they won't reach a point in which African leaders will have to embrace that, or else, They'll be kicked out like the rest in Tunisia, Egypt, or Libya. Thanks a lot. No problem. <laughs>